Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide, the video series that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. In this part of the Absolute Beginner Guide, we are learning how to use Transex, and we're going to spend a bunch of time learning how to use Transex because it's a it's it's basically invaluable. You have to know how to use Transex if you're going to go anywhere other than the ISS. Uh, there's another there's another MFD that can be used to go to the planets. It's called IMFD. But um, as I've explained in other videos, it's important to learn how to use Transex because you'll run into some things that you're, gonna, you're going to want to do eventually where you can't use IMFD to get the job done. So where it's important to learn Transex. Okay, let's go ahead and switch uh, camera views here. And let's go ahead and get underway. Now, in the last video, we uh, what did we do? We completed our mid-course corrections. And we, I showed how doing the mid-course corrections at a specific point in the flight can save you a lot of delta V. In this case, I, it didn't save us a ton, but in other cases, in other flights, you might find that you could spend upwards of 100 or 200 delta V on mid-course corrections when going from the Earth to Mars just by doing it at the wrong time. So the method that I use is what Dimitri taught me, and it's been flawless, so I don't see any reason to to even attempt to show anything else. Uh, but I did want to show that the method that's mentioned in the Deep Space Manual, because if people read that, and then they might actually try to do their first mid-course correction when they get away from Earth's gravitational influence. And again, Dimitri has shown me without, you know, uh, just absolutely that that's not the best time. All right, let's go ahead then and uh, continue on. Let's get down into Mars and do our atmospheric braking maneuver. Uh, one thing I'll mention, I, I, I'm going to, I quick saved at this point. I don't do a ton of, a ton of this uh, type of flying with the XR2. So it's not, it's not the case that I, that I can't do it. It's the case that I might blow it the first time. Um, or even the second time or third time. So I'm going to fly it as many times as I have to to, to get it right. And I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to record it. So, you know, some people, they'll make orbiter videos, and if they make a mistake, they'll stop, and then they'll go back and re-record it. And if they make a mistake, they'll stop, and they'll just continually do that until it's perfect. I don't like to do that. I like to show my mistakes, because you can learn as much from mistakes as you can from... From, ever, from doing it exactly correctly. So let's hope that we get it right the first time, but if we don't, we'll just start back at this point and do it again. I'm gonna bring up surface MFD on this side, and we're just gonna warp time forward until we're much closer to Mars. Actually, before we do that though, let me double check the, let me double check interplanetary MFD. So our PEA is 14 kilometers. I, I just I think that's a little on the low side. Rotation. So let me rotate over to perfectly prograde. And let me bring that out just a little bit. Translation. Because uh, I, I actually think this is okay normally, but our uh, our periapsis velocity is a little bit higher than I'm used to seeing on my Earth to Mars flights. Because on my most of my Earth to Mars flights, I do more of a perfect Hamann transfer and the periapsis velocity is a couple thousand meters per second lower than that. So I'm a little worried that this time we're, we're getting in a bit too deep. Um, and Dimitri actually has a, a calculator where you can roughly estimate the your hull temperature based on altitude and periapsis velocity, but I'm not gonna bring that up. So, but let's bring our PEA out to, uh, let me think, 25 sounds reasonable to me. Just give me a second to think about that. That might even be a little low. Because the, the the atmosphere on Mars is much uh, thinner than Earth, so we, we, we have to get down deeper. But if we get, if we're too high, we won't get captured. But if we're too low, we won't get, uh, we will overheat. All right, let's, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with 27.5. Let me just kind of split my thinking down the middle. I was thinking 25 or 30, but let's just split it. Let's go 27.5. All right, now I'm going to bring up surface and just warp time forward until we are at entry interface. Entry interface, oh, that's cool. We have a uh, Phobos right there. 
it looks like probably Demos over there. Yep. Entry interface on Mars is basically the same as it is on Earth. Be careful with your time warp. Sometimes it'll stutter and you'll... So 200 kilometers. And there we are. And you'll notice we're descending quickly, so we need to get things done. Turn on the APU. And we need to bring in the radiator. And we're going to turn surface controls on, and we're going to set our RCS mode to rotation. Actually, we're going to turn it off. Now, nah. we'll put it on rotation for now because we're still high up enough. And you want to leave the APU on at this point because um, we're going to be using surface controls and center of gravity shift. One thing we can do here too is we can do a re-entry check. Press 9 on the top of the keyboard, not the numeric keypad, but the top of the keyboard. Re-entry check. All systems green. That's just to make sure that you haven't left something open and forgot about it. Re-entry check. Oops. All systems green. And now we're going to go to the attitude hold and we're going to change it to AOA. And we're going to put our bank angle in as negative 180. So we're going to be upside down. And we're going to put in a just a 15 degree AOA for starters that way. And let's rotate heads up because the first thing we need to do is eliminate this vertical speed because right now we're descending into the atmosphere really fast. It's just crazy fast. So before we worry about trying to break, we need to have that be closer to zero. It's warp time forward. Be careful though, because we're getting into the atmosphere. I'd say 65 kilometers is about it. No more time warp at this point. Now, the, the keyboard shortcut to engage this is L, the letter L, so we're not going to have this up. Instead, we're going to have the temperature display up, and when we need to engage the autopilot, then we're going to press L on the keyboard. So you can see our temperature coming up now, and shortly we'll have uh, you know flames and atmospheric effect. You can see it building up. What we want to do is we want to engage the autopilot when our vertical speed it starts to, you know, actually now. <laughs> and hopefully that wasn't too soon. You can see our temperature building up. Okay, we're going to go over it. Careful with the wing stress. We're descending into the atmosphere. That's good. Um, just Control System W to get rid of that re get rid of that noise. Uh, I think I screwed this up. Yeah. All right. Warning. Hull yeah, that's not gonna work. Kabawi, we we're dead. Okay. So. There's, there, there's a much easier way to do atmospheric braking at Mars, but it's so slow, I don't like to do it that way. So let's exit out. And let's go back in and do that again. And I kind of, I really suspected that was going to happen. That's why I forewarned the viewing audience. But, you know, again, I've, I've even had people comment multiple times that they appreciate that I show my failures because they don't... Uh, you know, they watch other orbiter videos and it's like this flawless flight from start to finish. And you, you don't, you can't really understand what you did wrong if all you see is perfection. Warning conditions detected. System reset. All right. Control W to get rid of the noise. Now again, we uh, need to adjust our PEA. What I should probably do is set it and then resave. So 27.5 might have been a little bit low. Let's go to 32. Yeah, let's go like that number. Now let me, yeah, let me save at this point. Well, saving doesn't much matter, but. All right, surface mode. Now warping time forward, bringing the altitude back down. Entry interface, we'll turn the stuff on. Careful with the time warp. About right there, it kind of overshot it a little bit. APU, radiator in, surface Gosh. controls on, rotation. Uh, we don't need to redo a re entry check, we, we know that we're good. And we're going to set AOA. Actually, this is something else I can do. If I, if I have to do this a couple more times, I'll set this stuff up 
and then do a quick save so I don't have to do it every time. So negative 180, and then probably, you know, like 20 to start with. Let's roll heads up. And it looks like 65 is a good number to make sure that you're no longer time warping. Excuse me, got the hiccups. Okay, so same deal here. We're just kind of watching our vertical speed. And what we want to do is we want to roll upside down and then and then kind of backwards so that the bottom of the vessel is facing into the atmosphere. And again, there's a much easier way to do atmospheric braking at Mars, but it takes so long that I don't like to do it that way anymore. See our temperature display and we'll at 200, or I'm going to press L now, actually a little bit early, but that's okay. Now watch our temperature display, and I just want to make sure that we don't dig in too deep. Now the vertical speed's increasing, so I'm going to increase my angle of attack, because that'll slow down. See, now the vertical speed, okay, now we've got it. So this is what we need to do. Now we just have to adjust our angle of attack accordingly so that the vertical speed doesn't get too high and doesn't get too low. But this is what I wanted to have happen. Now we're in the atmosphere. This bottom part of the vessel is what's causing the braking. If you see our acceleration, we're getting negative 1.2 Gs. But now we're climbing and we don't want that. So we need to pitch up a little bit or re reduce our angle of attack a bit so that we don't climb back out into space because we're not even captured yet. Keep that in mind. Now you can see the vertical speed getting back down closer to zero, and that's what we want to have happen. Bring up Orbit MFD just so we can pay attention to what's going on exactly. And I could also bring up Load MFD and put that on the thing, but I gotta move my camera. But now you can see what our actual load is. But now, again, notice our vertical speed. We don't want to let it dive us into the planet. Sorry if I blew the microphone there too hard. So we want to keep that under control. But this is what this is what you need to have happen when you do uh, atmospheric braking at Mars. And this way is just a lot faster. Uh, perhaps in an alternative video of some kind, I'll show, an, I'll show an easier way to do it. But this way is very fast. Watching our eccentricity. And we would like to stay here at around, looks like 30 kilometers is a good number. We're nice and cool. We don't, we could even open the radiator at this point, in fact, because our, this part of our vessel back here, even though it looks like it's all inflamed, it's actually really cool. So uh, cool temperature wise. But again, watch that vertical speed. If it starts to uh, get too, you know, if you're, if you're climbing before you're captured, you're going to skip back out into space. So try to keep your vertical speed closer to zero or, you know, a little bit into the negative. And all I'm doing to adjust the angle of attack is I'm just using eight and two on the numeric keypad. And you'll notice every time I do that, it changes the, out, the, the attitude hold by uh, 2.5 degrees. And our eccentricity is now 1.9. So we're, you know, we've got a ways to go to get captured. Now we don't want to dive so deep into the atmosphere that uh, once we get captured we end up devolving our orbit really quick so we want to stay up here you know at 30 plus kilometers actually come to think of it i already knew that i don't know why i was thinking 14 that's i don't know what was going through my head because so i've done the, i've done this enough that i know better than that in fact we should probably climb up a little bit more get closer to 35 because by the time by the time the eccentricity gets close to capture we want to be a little higher but now the vertical speeds getting getting a bit of a cons becoming a bit of a concern so I'm gonna lower the AOA a little bit so that the vertical speed comes down and we're almost captured and we don't really have any flame anymore nice and cool one point three on the eccentricity so we're not too far away from capture and our loads all the way down to point seven nine so we're no longer feeling a lot of stress
yeah, this is working out pretty well. That's uh, coming down. We're at 35 kilometers. That's good. Eccentricity 1.2. And once we actually get captured here in just a moment, we'll continue to fly at, at this angle for a little bit. But then we're going to turn off the autopilot. We're going to roll back over heads up because we don't want to have it be the case that we bring our apoapsis down so much that we can't orbit that we can't orbit mars because i have no idea how i'm aligned with olympus at this point i've never even looked i've never even checked through the course of this entire flight so let's actually do that now let's just take a quick look display mod and actually just by dumb luck we're really close to olympus on on this orbit but you know i didn't do any planning on that whatsoever so it could have very well been the case that we were nowhere near olympus you know, I just noticed that, uh, well, I guess that's just inclination. I was going to say, I noticed that Dan Steff's new base is, on a, or as far as the orbital plane is concerned, it's really close to Olympus, but that's just purely due to my own inclination. Okay, we're almost 24. captured. Oh my gosh, my inclination is getting way out of control. So what I want to do now is I'm actually going to shut off that autopilot, and I'm going to roll over. And I shut off the autopilot, by the way, by just by pressing L. Because I want that vertical speed to get back up closer to zero. Now I can control the vertical speed just with bank angle. And my elevator trim is set, so I'm going to reset it here. And we don't want to climb too much because we'll go way out into space. So you can control vertical speed just by banking in and out. You could probably turn off surface control or actually shut off rotation at that point, at this point. And if you notice that your plane is getting farther off from where you're trying to go, then just bank the other direction. I'm going to go ahead and roll completely upside down at this point. And put in just a little bit of elevator trim. To bring that vertical speed down because again we don't want to climb way out into space at this point because our our orbital period would take us out into space you know by a month or a week or something we don't want that we just want to orbit mars you know at a normal time get rid of the elevator trim because now the vertical speed's almost back down to zero and also if we want to start paying attention to our base alignment let me actually bring up the larger mfds we can bring up base sync and we can target Olympus and ED over to direct. Uh, this is pretty useless almost at this point because our orbit period so long, but we can kind of start thinking about it. Put the numerical display to one. Put in a bunch of elevator trim at this point because our vertical speed's getting high and we're actually getting high up enough now we're at 36 kilometers in altitude we're getting to that point where we could potentially uh, skip back out into space we're, we're losing our hold on the atmosphere so we want that vertical speed to get back down to zero I think around 42 kilometers you pretty much almost completely lose your hold on the atmosphere so we don't want to go too much higher And well, that's it. You know, we're captured, so we our arrow capture is complete. Now we just want to uh, kind of continue flying like this until we can bring our apoapsis down. If you want to throw out the air brake, that'll create a little bit more drag. That can help, but mostly it's going to be controlled by altitude. So since we're captured and since things aren't changing very quickly, I'm going to let the altitude drop a little bit. We're going to get back down to like maybe 30, closer to 30 kilometers. That way we can bring our apoapsis down a lot more put a little more elevator trim to pitch down and I can see now my distance to the to the base is increasing it doesn't mean a whole lot at this point because our orbit is so far from circular but we can maybe correct that by banking the other direction maybe again it really doesn't matter at this point because we're 
our orbital period is just really long. Put in full up elevator trim though to start pulling down into the atmosphere a little bit farther. And you'll notice that we're, we'll get a lot more braking. Do watch your vertical speed though. Even though we want to get lower, we don't want our vertical speed to get too high. So I'm going to start taking out some of that elevator, elevator trim now. Okay, we're down to 35 kilometers. And you can, you can see how much more quickly, you know, things are... Things are coming down because we're getting into thicker air and we're getting more braking because of it. And a little bit more elevator trim. Just into the planet a little bit oh, so that we're getting more, more effect from the atmosphere. More braking from the atmosphere. But not to overdo it. Apoapsis is all the way down to 16,000 kilometers, and our orbital period is now just uh, 36,000, so it's less than half of a day. Watch that vertical speed. Zero out the elevator trim. At this point, if you get into trouble with your vertical speed, you can always roll the vessel back over. And we're undoubtedly cool enough that we can open the radiator if we want. Yeah, we can. So let's do that. Because you can spend so much time in the atmosphere that your coolant temperature will increase enough that it becomes a problem. Distance off base on this orbit's, uh, you know, that number, which is pretty good. But again, it doesn't mean a whole lot because we still need to bring our orbit down a lot. APA is down to 11,000. Uh, so... We want an orbit around Mars that's, you know, basically 200 by 200, something like that. Mach 21. Getting down below 30 kilometers. I'm, I'm okay with that. We're, pre we're going really slow. But uh, we want to keep an eye on that, make sure we don't get out of control with our vertical speed. And watch temperature a little bit. That's actually, we're getting a little hot on the back end, so we need to roll over. Uh, we're not hot per se, but we're hot enough that the radiator can't be deployed if we get much hotter than we are now. So I'm rolling over, and you can see how quickly that reduce, eliminates the vertical speed. But we're still, our apoapsis is high enough that we don't want to climb ridiculously. So we can kind of pretty much control Mach 20. our vertical speed mostly with bank angle at this point. A little bit more to go. Uh, we could probably get away with like 2x or 3x time warp. Press Control F2. Be really careful though, and don't do don't input anything while you're under time warp. So don't try to control the vessel under time warp. It's a really bad idea. Watching the apoapsis down to 4,000. Since the distance off base is increasing, I'm going to go ahead and bank out the other way. So I went back to 1x before I do any maneuvers. I'm going to roll the vessel the other way. And we'll go back and do a little bit of time warp. And the distance is still increasing. Again, with our apoapsis not being, with our orbit not being circular, this isn't real reliable. Apoapsis down to 2,300. Watch that vertical speed as we're under time warp. I'm gonna go back to 1x and I'm gonna see if I roll the other way, if that'll help the uh, distance off base. Probably doesn't make a lot of difference at this point because what's happening is we're slowing down, right? 
so that distance off base is going to change like re regardless of which way we're rotated or which which way we're banked okay we're getting uh, you know down to 1400 so it's not going to be long now before we're going to want to roll heads up and then just glide back up to an orbital altitude because if you if you spend too much time in the lower atmosphere then you won't uh, you won't have enough energy to get back up to orbital altitude so I think we're getting close to that point we're gonna go ahead and roll heads up and we're gonna bring in the air brake and we don't have any elevator trim do we no okay so now we're 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 flying straight forward and we're kind of we're climbing a bit and our apoapsis is continuing to come down but it's not going to come down too much more because we're you know we're we're on a positive climb and it doesn't have to be perfectly 200 just you know but we don't want to we don't want an apoapsis of thousands of kilometers and but again we also don't want to have it be so low I'm gonna go ahead and roll over for now. So it looks like we're climbing a bit too fast. And just in base sync over here, I'm also looking at how the off base distance is behaving. Now with this angle, it's coming down. So apoapsis is all the way down to 850. And you can see it's slowly coming down because we're almost up to the point where we're not having any, uh, we're not getting any, you know, the atmosphere isn't doing anything for us. So I'm gonna put in just a little bit of elevator trim just to bring this down, to bring down the vertical speed so we can spend a little bit more time in the atmosphere. So we don't wanna have an apoapsis that's quite that high. And no more time warp. And get create a little more drag throughout the air brake for just a moment. Touch of time warp. Apoapsis down to 650, 600. Down to about 550. And we're still climbing out. Now we're really not getting... Hardly, um, you know what, I shouldn't time warp with the APU running. APU so make sure you shut that off for now. And we're coming up to 30 minutes on this point of the video, so we're going to end it here in just a moment. But I just want to complete the capture and circularization uh, part before we move on, or before we end this part of the video. Now we're up to uh, 60 plus kilometers, so we're really not getting any drag out of the atmosphere at all at this point. And we're not really getting any more base alignment correction. Okay, so basically we're in orbit again. All right, let's go back to real time. And let's close the air brake, no point in having it out. Turn off the APU. Now there's a couple of options we have. We can, we can come around to apoapsis and uh, bring up the other side of our orbit to 200 about 200 we wouldn't want to circularize necessarily because our apoapsis is higher is higher than we really want our target to be so we could come come to apoapsis and bring up the periapsis a little bit and then orbit mars as long as we want um, but what we could also do is we can just be, try to land right away without even making any further adjustments to our orbital altitude and that's probably normally what I would do, because here we are about halfway around. We're not quite halfway around. Uh, yeah, really close to halfway around from the from our landing site. So we would actually, instead of coming around to apoapsis and raising our periapsis, we could actually just right now at this point go to the retrograde position and lower that side of our orbit. That way we pass, uh, you know, that way we get ready to do uh, landing and re-entry. But uh, the fact of the matter is, to be perfectly honest, I'm really tired of making orbiter videos right now. So I'm going to control S to save at this point. 
and then I'll pick up from here uh, tomorrow or a month from now or whenever I feel like messing with this again and uh, we'll figure out what we're going to do for our landing. So uh, that's it, uh, but that's, you know, at least for the sake of going from the ground at Earth to Mars, you, you, now, you now know what to do. And if you already know how to do atmospheric reentry at Earth, then landing at Mars won't be impossible for you. It's quite a bit more challenging because it's so different from landing on Earth because just the, the difference in the atmosphere is the atmosphere at Earth is much thicker. So you can come in to, um, you know, you can come into your landing site and glide a lot. But with Mars, you have to be very much pinpoint in alignment with wherever you're trying to go uh, thousands of kilometers in advance because the gliding is much less much less effective on Mars. Uh, and, when, and when you get up close to a landing site, there's no gliding at all. It's You, you have to be lined up or else you're just not going to make it. So we'll address all that in, in the next part of the Absolute Beginner Guide. But uh, if you like this part, like it. And if you didn't like it, don't like it. Check for links in the description down below. And I will see you in the next video.